Namaste and welcome to your pranayama practice today for the sacral chakra. So you might be doing this as a standalone practice. You might do it before your asana practice or at the end of your asana practice before meditation. So really I'm saying you could do this anytime. Um, but what we're going to do, a couple of techniques we're going to use. Uh, again, we're working with that water element. So we're going to work with ujjayi breath which brings that ocean-like sound to the breath as we utilize breath retention. And then we're also going to be using a little bit of kumbhaka, which is uh, breath retention, which does all kinds of things for the body. And one of the things that it does is it um, creates a state of hypoxia, which helps to initiate stem cell uh, production in the body, which does a whole panacea of um, benefits for us and I have to say that because of some medical conditions I have I get a lot of blood tests done on a regular basis sometimes as many as 40 or 50 different tests at a time and there have been several occasions when some things that are chronically low in my blood when I'm doing um, regular daily um, pranayama that I can actually see those markers that are low, particularly um, some of the markers for anemia, they go up by a couple of points. So I find it interesting to not only hear about the things from a more esoteric uh, yoga Ayurveda background um, that breath retention kombucha can, can do for you, kombucha. <laughs> um, but I can see it in my blood test. So I am a big advocate for pranayama, even though it's a subtle practice. It's working on the subtle body in ways that we're not necessarily aware of immediately, but things are going on on the inside. So we're going to start uh, with a breath called Kapatabali, which isn't necessarily a uh, pranayama per se, but we're going to add some breath retention at the end of it, which is that pranayama. Um, aspect of the breath. And so Kapatabali breath is really a cleansing, purifying breath. And um, it also activates this low belly um, during it. And, and because we want to tune in and activate that low belly, the area of the pelvis, this is a great breath for us to do. Great breath to do uh, any time when you need a little bit more energy. And we're also going to be building on this in our next practice next week, which is our solar plexus and working with fire. So let's get started on practicing it today. Um, so Kapatabali is the forced exhale that initiates in the low belly, that space beneath your navel center. And so what we do is we contract that area of the belly muscularly quickly and it forces the diaphragm up and the breath out and then as we let that go the inhale happens passively and so we're going to do it slow today and we're just going to do one round but we are going to add uh, breath retention at the end so i'll instruct you to exhale um, all your breath out when we end and then we'll take an inhale and hold the breath at the top float up at the top of your inhale so you can actually bring your hand to your belly if you wish um, the other thing you can do is bring your pinky and thumb together for the water element so that's what I'm doing with my left got my right hand on my belly so hopefully you can see what I'm doing a little bit so take a nice deep inhale together into the low belly feel it in your hand and as you exhale draw the belly in nice and slow let all the breath out feel that contraction that drawing towards the spine and then take another inhale and we will begin So make sure it's the exhale that the belly is drawing in and then as you release the belly the inhale just comes in on its own. Keep moving with your breath. As you move you might begin to feel that acts of activation of those lower abdominal muscles contracting. 
in the pelvic area to create that action. And as we keep going, you might begin to feel a little fatigue in that area if you're not used to doing this breath. So just keep going for a couple of more breaths. And then exhale everything out. And inhale all the way to the top of your breath, where we're going to float at the top of our breath for some inhale retention. So just holding there without straining, holding, retaining, feeling some of that prana begin to build in the body. Take one more last little sip and slowly release all the air out and just come to your normal breath so that was kapata bali finding that activation here and you can just sit with your eyes closed and feel that effect of that breath which we'll be feeling a lot more in our next class maybe beginning to bring a little bit of warmth a little bit of sensation and awareness to the belly and sometimes if you're not used to the breath it's also sometimes called uh, skull shining breath you can even feel some sensation in the forehead it's often done before uh, meditation and before your asana practice just to clear and cleanse and get rid of the old and the stale so now we're going to move into our ujjayi breath, which we did some of this last week with our, uh, sorry, I've got sore ankles. Um, we did some of this last week with our root chakra. And because the root being the very base is so closely connected with the pelvis and the sacral, <laughs> sacral chakra, we're going to be using some of the similar breaths that we did because they really work together. And the earth element and the water element, uh, even though water is getting a little more movement, not quite as solid as earth, it still has that downward movement with gravity. And so the apana vayu that we worked with, I uh, will work with it a little bit differently today, rather than um, um, envisioning it traveling out the legs down your feet and into the earth, we're going to work with the base of the pelvis of traveling out the base of your pubic bone, and your two sit bones like a triangle and that's where the breath is going to exhale down into the earth with that downward movement and so um, again we can come into our mudra just um, holding thumb to the tip of the pinky finger and you can change the cross of your legs and palms facing up and so we're creating that restriction in the back of the throat for our ujjayi. If you know ujjayi, you can go ahead and get started and just moving into equal breath to start and maybe a count of four. If you're really used to doing pranayama, you might have your count to six or even eight, depending how experienced you are. But the rest of us are gonna start at four. And so you create that restriction at the back of your throat so that you can feel the air travel on the floor of the nasal cavity and you hear that ocean-like breath. And as you hear that ocean-like breath, perhaps you can envision, and if you're a person who has trouble with envisioning, you can maybe look at a picture of the ocean before you start so that you have that in your mind as we move into this. And you're going to create that restriction both on your inhale as well as your in exhale. So it'll sound like this. And so I'm going to count for the first few here for a count of four. So let's get started with your inhaling for four, three, two, one and exhaling for one, two, three, four. And inhaling for four, three, two, one. And exhaling for one, two, three, four. Now continue with that breath, with that equal breath, whatever count you're using, and just keeping that restriction, that ocean sound of the breath happening. And then of course we're going to add 
that breath retention at the top and at the bottom when you're ready and if you're ready. And so we're going to try and make it equal count all the way through. So four, 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 and four. So inhaling for four, floating at the top of your inhale for a count of four, and then exhaling for four, where you float at the bottom of that swell for a count of four. And so just continue in this manner with equal inhale, equal pause as you float at the top, equal exhale, and equal pause as you float, as you float at the bottom. And if your mind begins to wander, let's bring your attention back to the count of the breath and the count of your retentions. Now, if this rhythm begins to feel comfortable and natural to you, you can add that envisioning of the exhale, the breath traveling down uh, into the sit bones and into the front of the pubic bone and into the earth with a panavayu. going for just a couple more rounds of breath here and feeling that fluidity and hearing that ocean sound and perhaps envisioning that ocean and perhaps envisioning that downward flow into the pelvis. Do one last round ending at the bottom of your retention on the exhale. And once you complete that, release the counting, release the ujjayi, and bring one hand to your heart, one hand to your low belly. And just bring your awareness to inhaling down into the low belly and feeling the low belly move towards your spine as you exhale. And let go of all the retentions and just let this rhythm flow like the waves of the ocean. Feeling the swell of the belly on the inhale. And the belly moving towards spine on the exhale. And then you can release your hands to your thighs. Let your uh, eyes float open if you had them closed as I did. And just take a moment before you move into the next practice or into your day, just to notice how you feel uh, after your pranayama. And pranayama is something that um, the results come with practice of doing it every day of consistency, not that you do pranayama one day and you're cured of everything. <laughs> so uh, thank you for joining me for this pranayama practice. I hope this is something that you will try and implement into your day on a daily basis. And we'll see you on the next practice. Namaste.